Welcome to Ross Flybox. Today's video is demonstrations on several techniques used when creating peacock curl dubbing ropes. Um, you can use just the peacock curl, you can reinforce the peacock curl, you can enhance the peacock curl with other materials. I'm going to go over three techniques that I use just in applying peacock curl and why I use them. Uh, this by no means is a uh, is saying these are better. Uh, everyone has different techniques. There's a million different tools out there for building dubbing loops. Some people like the tools. Some people uh, don't use them at all. I use uh, more of an old school method of uh, hackle plier and shepherd's hook. But uh, this is how I do it. I've had a number of questions that I've fielded, uh, and I, I think this will answer some of the some of the questions that I get regularly. I'm going to start off with a long shanked hook for uh, demonstration purposes only and I'm also going to use red denier, uh, 210 denier thread a little bit larger uh, so that you can see it a little bit better for uh, demonstration purposes. I'm going to start off in the back and I'm going to give myself a little start of thread. Now I very seldom ever tie in peacock curl by itself and I very seldom ever tie it in with a single strand uh, mainly because they tend to break even when you twist them slightly they do tend to break and uh, I don't like to mess with it if one breaks I can keep going I usually tie in three uh, and when I'm gonna be twisting and if one breaks while I'm going I just keep going and, uh, and wrap it in now what my first technique I'm going to demonstrate is I, I almost always use a loop. I don't use a single strand of, of thread to reinforce. So I'll make a loop or form a loop, thread loop, and I'll leave it hang right there. Next step I'll take uh, several strands peacock curl. I'll tie it in. And then what I do is I open the loop with my fingers and I sweep the peacock curl back into that loop. And then I grab it with my hackle pliers, keeping everything in with even tension. And I, I scoop up my hackle pliers and I twist. Now you're going to twist until you see the rope. You got to keep even tension until you see the rope start to form all the way back to the hook. Don't pull too hard or you'll break it. Break it earlier than really you want to. If it breaks while you're wrapping, like I said, I use three pieces of hurl. So it, it I can keep going. And then you just wrap. If you when you're spinning with hackle pliers and you're actually at times applying a reverse turn sometimes if you use your tool if you keep the shepherd's hook on it and you'll have to add a few more turns as you go. But you're just going to wrap evenly forward one in front of the other. And although I don't use red thread, I could. You could enhance the body. But generally, I don't want to make it just a hurl body. And that's the method I use for tying in just a hurl body, standard hurl body. And we'll tie that off quick there so it don't come loose. And we're going to move forward. The second method that I like to use requires an additional piece of material. You can enhance the peacock curl very easily utilizing hackle. And you can turn a regular dub body or you can tie a Griffiths Nat or you can tie a Griffiths Max like I've tied here on the site very simply. Again I'm going to form my, 
my thread loop I move my vise there and I'm going to take it and pull it off to the side next step is to tie in my peacock curl I'm going to tie in three strands once more And then next I'm going to tie in the third piece of enhancement which is a two size and two undersized uh, dry fly hackle. If I'm tying on an eight then I'm going to tie a, uh, a 12 size hackle. That's, that's the proportion that I like when I'm, when I'm tying hackle in with, with hurl. I'm going to tie that in tip first. I'm not going to try and do anything to it. I'm not going to sweep it back. And I'm going to pull my thread back. And I'm going to gather up my hurl and my hackle. Pull it together. <sighs> Clean my hackle pliers out. And you don't want to leave any slack in any of the materials. Because then it won't twist correctly. I'm going to gather them all up together. And I'm going to twist once more. And as you twist, you'll see your hackle start to pop. It'll open up a little bit. As soon as you see that open up all the way back to your hook, you're going to start wrapping. You're going to wrap the exact same way as you did for a standard hurl body. And you'll see as you start to wrap, that hackle will stand up in dry fly fashion, even though it's wrapped in a dubbing loop. That'll give you your your uh, hackled dubbing brush. I use this technique for the Griffiths Max, and I've been using it for a Griffiths Nat for years. Works far better, I feel, than the, the standard technique. The last technique. I'm going to demonstrate is using three forms of of enhancement. We're going to use the technique that I tie the skittle with, and this is the this is the technique that brought most of the questions. We're going to start off by forming the loop. Tucking it to the side. Now you can form this loop last if you want. I have a hook keeper here that I use quite often. So I just tie it in and, and ahead. But the loop can be tied in as the last step, really. tie in our peacock curl. In normal fashion. In 
and then we are going to tie in the color like in the skittle the wire that we want in this case we're using chartreuse wire and then we're going to tie in our hackle once more tip first and then once again we're going to sweep it all together the only thing you want to make sure that you do here differently is make sure that you pull that that wire kink that wire just a little bit at the shank give that a little bit of a harder pull so that it doesn't have a rounded bend at the start and we're going to twist this the same way as we did the last one make sure we start to get the hackle popping all the way back to the shank of the hook and then we're going to wrap it in this is a pretty thick bundle so you can't go behind itself in other words you got to keep one in front of the other what this does is provide you with a hackled shiny ribbed body in one step I left a little bit too much it's catching on my fingers there you don't have to leave as much and tie off a little bit bulkier than the last one and it adds the color that you want or the shine that you want even if you don't see it immediately when this gets in the water and the hackle starts moving you will you will see it just like ribbing on a, a woolly bugger you might not see it in the chenille at first but it's what it looks like when it's wet that matters and there you go those are the three main methods I use for doing bodies with a peacock curl. Standard peacock reinforced with a with a with thread only. Peacock curl with a thread reinforcement and a hackle applied. Peacock curl with thread reinforcement, a wire, and the hackle applied. Standard peacock nymph. Uh, Griffiths Max or Griffiths Nat can be used for both and the skittle is uh, the three that I apply it to specifically. I hope that helps answer some of your questions and I uh, hope that adds to your box. Good luck. See you in the water.